So what does linear phase mean? We're going to look at a sinusoid. We're going to consider an example where it's gone into a system and it's come out with a delay. So here we are with the output coming delayed by tor. And on this side, if we take little t and we subtract tor from it, then we would have this signal on this side. So over here we have sine of 2 pi f1. We've done it for a particular frequency, this frequency f1, the one that I've drawn, uh, with t minus tor. This gives us the signal that we have. And now we've got to find out the value of tor for this particular delay. And so I'm going to draw in also the rest of the signal here because, of course, uh, we're actually considering a sine wave. I've only drawn one period of it here, uh, but we're considering the sine wave going on. So now let's think about what this value of tor is. Well, if we look down here, we see the sine wave drawn out here for a value of alpha, a general value of alpha. So all the thing is in the brackets, I've plotted that here on the axis. Notice up here, I'm not plotting the axis as the whole thing in the brackets, I'm only plotting little t, not 2 pi f1 times little t. Whereas down here, I'm plotting the thing that's in the brackets on the axis. That's important difference. So let's think about, we've used this as our reference, of course, this is the sine function, and we've now got to use this to help us work out what capital Tor is. So let's look at when t equals zero as an example. Okay, so now we've got the thing in the brackets is minus two pi f1 Tor, because t equals zero. That's when t equals zero. When t equals zero, we're here. When t equals zero, the value of our function is here the most negative that it goes. So let's look down here when sine of the thing in the brackets, this is what we've got here, the thing in the brackets, when sine of the thing in the brackets is the most negative it can be, that is when the thing in the brackets alpha equals minus pi divided by two. Okay, so this equals minus pi divided by two. So now we can work out that for the delay that I've drawn here, we have tor equals 1 divided by 4 f1. So for the delay that I have drawn here, where the delay is exactly one quarter of a period, we have the value tor, the actual time delay, is 1 divided by 4 f1. We've calculated that. So that means we can write our expression here, sine of 2 pi f1 t minus pi divided by two. Okay, so that's our equation for this function here when we delayed by that value of tor. Okay, now let's look at what that same delay does to a different sinusoid at a different frequency. So let's take, for example, the sinusoid that is twice this frequency. So this sinusoid uh, now goes like this. It's twice the frequency, so there's two cycles here where there was only one here, and it's delayed by the same value of tor. That's what we're considering here. So now we've got the function here, delayed by the same value of tor. And now what we can see is when we extend it backwards, because we're considering a, a continuous waveform, uh, now we can see the same value of tor means a different phase shift. This one was pi on two phase shifted, now we've, we do the same procedure here. We see that minus 2 pi f2 this time, f2, but the same value of tor. Now what happens? Now we look back and we see, well, when t equals 0, this is what we're doing here, when t equals 0, the thing in the brackets, that's when t equals 0, so the thing in the brackets equals 0. And where is that on here? That is at 0 and going down. So here that is at minus pi. That's at zero and going down. When the thing in the brackets uh, gives you an, a sine wave where the value is zero going down. That's what we've got here. So this equals minus pi in this case. So for the same value of tor, that's the important thing. So now for the same value of tor, we now have this function here, sine, because the frequency is different, two pi f two t minus pi. Okay, and now we can see for the same value of tor, the same delay, this function at that frequency was delayed in phase by minus pi on two, but this function at this frequency was delayed in phase by pi. And so if we plot that 
on a frequency versus phase plot, and we go to F1, F1 was delayed by pi on 2. So that's this point here. Uh, F2, which was twice F1, so this is 2F1, that was delayed by pi, which is here. And we can see what we uh, straight away from here that this is going to hold for any other function in between those frequencies as well, or any other frequency. And so this is where we get the concept of linear phase. Because you can see here for a function, this was one frequency and this is twice the frequency. But if we had a frequency which was, let's say, one and a half times this frequency, so it was in the middle here, then you can use the same logic to see that the phase shift would be 3 pi on 4 in that case. This was pi on 2, this is pi. You can use the same logic of this to see that that would be 3 pi on 2. And so you can see there is a, for this delay example, there is a linear phase shift. And uh, also, of course, you could see that if the delay was twice, like if we doubled the delay, this whole waveform was moved across further, then in this case, you would have pi, and in this case, you would have 2 pi. So in that case, if it was double the delay, so if this is the, this is the delay where tor equals 1 divided by 4 F1, but if you doubled that delay, then you would get double the slope of this curve. And uh, this would be tor equals 1 on 2 F1 if you doubled the delay. Okay, so for a simple case of a delay, if we put a signal into a system with a delay, then you get this relationship. You can see as the for higher frequencies, the phase shift is greater and it's a linear relationship. That's what linear phase is. Um, higher frequency, another way of viewing that is that higher frequencies have smaller wavelengths. So the percentage change in the phase from the same delay, same actual absolute time delay, the percentage change in the phase is greater and it's a linear relationship. Um, this doesn't just hold for delays. This is a system with a delay. It doesn't just hold for system with delays. It holds for other types of filters as well. You might have filters where different frequencies have received different amplitudes uh, scalings as they go through your filter. Uh, but if they have the same phase shift for uh, in a linear phase shift or the same delay of each of those frequency components, then you have what's called linear phase. If it's the same absolute delay shift, results in a linear phase shift. And so you might ask yourself, well, when do you not have linear phase? Well, that's when different frequencies are delayed by different amounts. And some examples of those include optical fibers and infinite impulse response filters. Um, and just one last thing to see is that this is uh, also re um, represented in Fourier transforms where you have the Fourier transform of xt minus tor uh, in Fourier transform lookup tables. You can easily see or you might remember that the Fourier transform with a delay is the original Fourier transform uh, multiplied by e to the minus j omega times tor. So if there was a time delay, then the Fourier transform is just the Fourier, original Fourier transform multiplied by e to the minus j omega tor. And you can see here now, as the delay gets bigger, uh, or sorry, as omega gets bigger for the same tor, then the phase is linear, because this is what this says here. So for a fixed delay tor, the phase, as, the, as the frequency goes up, the phase goes up, because this, in the argument of the exponential here, that is the phase of your complex number. So if this has helped you to understand linear phase, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web link in the description below the video where you'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.